inside a newly opened portion of Museo delle Terme, let's explore a brand new exhibition that highlights some of the most amazing things from ancient Rome and around the Mediterranean. I'm here in these incredible halls, part of the Baths of Diocletian, which is part of Museo delle Terme. And on this occasion, this is an extraordinary exhibition of 2023 that celebrates the Stante e l'Eternità, instant and eternity. And together, we can explore some of the highlights of this incredible exhibition. And really, what sets off your exploration of this artwork? Well, nothing comes closer to that idea of instant and eternity than the destruction from Pompeii. And we have here two recently discovered casts of Pompeians that met their end in AD 79. So let's go explore. Let's start within this incredible setting, some rooms from the Baths of Diocletian never before opened to the public. And they are an incredible setting for looking at this artwork. And this first section we'll explore is the Hall of Heroes. There's Julius Caesar on the right. We have vase painting depicting the heroes of Greek mythology. And here is our central protagonist. It's Ulysses himself. And he comes from the Villa of Tiberius in Sperlonga. And you have so many pieces here in this section highlighting the achievements of man. And here we have the Minotaur that was conquered by the mythological hero Theseus. From this section, we move into a portion that contains a beautiful vaulted ceiling from the house of Leda. Leda who gives us Castor and Pollux and Helen of Troy. And we have the belly button, the Omphalus from Delphi. And here is our true protagonist of the collection, the Kiji Tablet. And there's so many incredible pieces here, but this one is kind of, let's say, the rock star piece. This is the Kiji Tablet dating back to about the first century BCE. And the idea was at a certain point, it's lost. It's lost from the archeological record. It's part of the Kiji collection, but it was ultimately misplaced recently rediscovered and acquired by the state and now for the first time again on display and what it shows you is two personified figures and we have it all written in greek and each one is labeled the woman on the left with the mural crown is europa europe and the one on the right is asia or asia and what they're holding up is a large shield with a battle it's a battle of the ages it's a battle of the world, and then we have uh, an, an inscription in three parts, written in Greek, and it's a quotation. It's all about Alexander the Great, who he himself, at his time, conquered the world. And it's just an extraordinary piece. It's miniature. It's just something handheld. And that was a fascination that you have of the Greeks and the Romans to pass along to your dinner guests this kind of artwork that you can inspect and appreciate the minute details and ultimately read the inscription and ponder, let's say your own mortality or ponder how the world works. This one, as opposed to most of the tabula, the little plaques that we have with artwork depicting usually scenes from the Iliad and the Odyssey uh, that are made of limestone, this is actually carved on Giallo Antico, which is uh, the famous yellow marble that comes from Tunisia. So it's a really precious piece of artwork that we have that is addressing some larger ideas about the world. In this portion, we continue the discussion on eternity, the cosmos with sundials. We have this wall painting with Urania, this muse associated with astronomy, and we have her surrounded by the depiction of a large bronze clock. Then we have this rather strange looking protagonist, Osiris Chronocrator, Osiris the Time Lord that creates eternity. This is not a figure that you see very often, nor do you see very often Ion, who is a representation of historical time 
linear time. He's Kronos in a new guise, surrounded by the Zodiac. Moving on to a section devoted to work and daily life, we have the first time on public display this marriage chariot found in Civita Giuliana by Pompeii. This is a faithful reconstruction with original parts made of silver and made of bronze. Here is a depiction of gladiators fighting, fished out from the Tiber, and here is a magnificent relief from Terracina that shows wall building with an extraordinary depiction of a crane in action. This relief is of a city, a walled city, found in the Lago di Fucino, which is in Abruzzo. And you don't have many depictions of cities in marble looking like this. We pass on to this relief, an extraordinary relief of a shopkeeper who was a woman, and she is depicted selling her wares, fresh fruits, rabbits, chickens. And you see the crowded atmosphere of that bar. This would have been an incredible signpost telling people, step inside my thermopolium, step inside my shop, this is what is for sale. Daily life continues with inscriptional evidence of an oculus. We have a pastiche of a tomb facade now on display. And we have extraordinary figures that come from the Villa dei Papyri outside of Herculaneum. And this extraordinary piece is a treasury box, an arca which would have been on prominent display inside a house in Pompeii. And we can see all the bronze work that is preserved. This was something that exclaimed the importance and the means of the owner of the house. Another standout in the collection is this famous silver hoard found in 1928 in a field in Marengo, near Torino. The entire weight of this collection of artwork, including a bust of Lucius Verus, is 28 kilos. So you don't just have wonderful representations of decorative art, which would have been on, say, a couch or part of a belt, but you also just have the sheer amount of silver preserved pass on to more modest tombs from the Republican era, as well as a mixture of various votive offerings of body parts, both of men and women from the Republican times. And there are so many portraits, and they're coming from all over the Mediterranean, but possibly the most compelling pieces that we'll find are found right in Italy. Let's take a look at a few. This famous piece is attributed to the first century BC, the first century AD. It's a rare depiction of a young black African. It's made of Bijou Morato marble, and quite possibly, according to a new study, it's ancient marble, but was actually produced as late as the 17th century. So we have a lot of controversy sometimes in understanding the original date and production of these works of art. Even though the marble is ancient, Maybe this piece isn't. And we have this piece right here. As we can see by the club and the lion skin cap, we have a Hercules. This is a known type. But then we have the portrait of what we think is a real person who's depicting himself as that hero. Now this was found in 2023. So another incredible aspect of this exhibition is that they're showing pieces just discovered. This one made the news, it was found on the Via Appia, and it's extraordinary then that we have it recently restored and quickly put on display. That's exciting. That's turning a new page in terms of the way in which the ministry and the museums are, are showing to the public things that are recently found. And that's another reason to underline the importance of this exhibition. Some people want to see this as an Emperor Dacius, who sometimes appears as Hercules, but more probable when we look at the particular hairstyle here, the facial hair, this most probably is just some wealthy individual. Maybe this is associated with his tomb in which he's depicting himself as Hercules himself, eventually immortalized after death. This is the famous statue of the Orator, a 
bronze statue and an inscription in Etruscan tells us it's Aulus Metellus. It was found near Perugia. It was found in 1566, one of the most famous bronze statues from the Republican era. What's extraordinary about Atrium Live is we can bring you behind the scenes, special access, getting you into exhibitions as they happen, getting you to excavation sites as they are active, and we can give you new insights being on location about ancient Rome live and life throughout the Mediterranean, which is absolutely extraordinary and always inspiring.